Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. B and B spoilers. Brooke accuses Taylor of using Steffi to get rich. The bold and the beautiful spoilers reveal that Brooke Logan, Catherine Kelly Lang, will confront Taylor Hayes, Rebecca Buttig, and ask if she still wants Ridge Forrester, Thorsten K. Of course, after seeing Ridge and Taylor during the chakra healing session, no one can blame Brooke for wonder. However, Taylor is also encouraging Steffi when it come to getting rid of Hope Logan, Annika Noel too. Will Brooke accuse Taylor of using Steffi to come between her and Ridge? Using Steffi to get Ridge The bold and the beautiful spoilers reveal that Ridge went behind Brooke's back while helping Taylor with her illness. Taylor originally thought she was dying only to find out she suffered from a broken heart. Rich helping with the chakra healing was going way too far, and Brooke was furious, as she should have been. Rich is supposed to be with Brooke, and even his father has called him out on his actions. Of course, Rich just claims that he was helping Taylor and makes excuses. The problem is that he was helping Taylor behind Brooke's back. Taylor doesn't see to be the least bit bothered by this either. Does Taylor still want Ridge back? Steffi had promised there would be no matchmaking this time, but every time she turns around she points out that Ridge and Taylor belong together, and Brooke needs to realize that. However, telling Steffi that he is with Brooke doesn't help Ridge to back her off at all. Therefore, Steffi has decided to meddle without being obvious about it. Steffi truly does not care for Brooke's feelings. She doesn't really care for her father's feeling either. Steffi just won her parents together and acts more like Kelly Spencer, Sophia Perez McKinley, or Beth Spencer, Jordan Gracie, than a grown woman. Perhaps Steffi just needs a break from the office for a few weeks. Brooke is extremely tired of being disrespected by Ridge's children, and she wants this to stop. Ridge is a grown man, and he should be professional enough to rein his daughter in. Brooke is tired of the disrespect that Brooke get is too much. Perhaps she just needs to get away from them. Should Brooke walk away from Ridge and Forrester? Brooke's contributions have been long overlooked at Forrester, and she is tired of it. Will Brooke end things with Ridge and let him continue to waffle toward Taylor all his want to? Brooke needs to save her daughter's reputation, but she also needs to save her state of mind, since she could get another job where she would be valued more at another man who respects her. The sun rose over Los Angeles, casting a golden glow across the sprawling Forrester estate. But inside the walls of the Forrester Creations office, the air was anything but serene. Brooke Logan stood in the middle of Ridge Forrester's office, her arms crossed and her emerald green eyes blazing with fury. Across from her, Taylor Hayes maintained a composed demeanor, but her clenched jaw betrayed her simmering frustration. I see right through you, Taylor, Brooke said, her voice cutting like glass. You're using Steffi's problems as a convenient excuse to wedge yourself between Ridge and me. Again. Taylor sighed, shaking her head as if Brooke's accusations were a familiar, tiresome refrain. This isn't about you or Ridge, Brooke. This is about Steffi. My daughter is going through hell right now, and she needs her family's support. Brooke took a step forward, her heels clicking against the polished floor. Oh, please. Every time Steffi has a crisis, you swoop in like the concerned mother, and somehow Ridge is always dragged into it. It's the oldest trick in your book. Taylor's eyes narrowed. You think this is a game to me? Steffi's marriage is falling apart, and she's struggling to keep her children safe and her sanity intact. If you can't see how serious this is, then maybe you're the one who doesn't belong in Ridge's life. Rich chose that moment to walk in, his face etched with weariness. His presence immediately shifted the energy in the room. Both women turned to him, their words hanging in the air like storm clouds about to burst. What's going on here? 
Ridge asked, his deep voice laced with exasperation. Brooke gestured toward Taylor, her tone sharp. Why don't you ask her? She's using Steffi's situation to manipulate you, Ridge. Again, Taylor's composure cracked. I am not manipulating anyone. Ridge, I came to you because Steffi needed her father. That's it. Brooke, you need to stop making this about your insecurities. Ridge raised his hands, signaling for both women to calm down. Enough, this isn't helping Steffi or anyone else. Brooke turned to Ridge, her expression softening slightly. Ridge, can't you see what she's doing? Every time we start to rebuild our relationship, Taylor finds a way to pull you back to her side. It's like clockwork. Taylor interjected, her voice steady but firm. If anyone is playing games here, it's you, Brooke. You're so obsessed with keeping Ridge to yourself that you can't see the bigger picture. This isn't about us. It's about our children. Ridge ran a hand through his hair, clearly torn. Both of you need to stop. Steffi needs our support right now. Not this. Rivalry. But Brooke wasn't ready to back down. Ridge, I support Steffi. I've always been there for her. But Taylor is using her vulnerability to rekindle something with you. Don't let her manipulate you. Taylor's face flushed with anger. How dare you accuse me of that? My only concern is my daughter. If you're too insecure to handle that, maybe you should look in the mirror instead of pointing fingers at me. The tension in the room was palpable, each woman refusing to back down. Meanwhile, at the cliff house, Steffi sat on the couch, staring at a photo of her family from happier times. Her heart ached as she thought about her estranged husband, Finn, and the chaos that had unfolded in their lives. She was exhausted, physically, emotionally, mentally. Her brother, Thomas, walked in with two cups of coffee. You look like you could use this, he said, handing her a mug. Steffi gave him a faint smile. Thanks. I feel like I'm barely holding it together. Thomas sat down beside her, his expression serious. You don't have to do this alone, Steffi. Mom and Dad are here for you. So am I. Steffi nodded, but her mind was elsewhere. She couldn't ignore the nagging feeling that her parents' renewed closeness was causing more harm than good. I appreciate that, but I can't help feeling like I'm at the center of something bigger. Mom and Brooke are at each other's throats again, and Dad's stuck in the middle. Thomas frowned. That's nothing new. They've been like that forever. But this time, it's different. Mom's focused on you, not Ridge. Steffi looked at her brother, unsure. Are you sure about that? Because it feels like history is repeating itself and I don't want to be the reason Dad's relationships fall apart again. Thomas placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder. You're not responsible for their drama, Steffi. They've been playing this game long before we were born. Focus on what's best for you and the kids. Let Mom and Brooke sort out their issues on their own. Back at Forrester Creations, Rich finally managed to get Brooke and Taylor to sit down, though the tension between them was still thick. Look, Ridge began, his tone measured. We all care about Steffi, and we want what's best for her. But this fighting isn't helping anyone. Brooke, I understand your concerns, but Taylor isn't the enemy here. Brooke opened her mouth to protest, but Ridge held up a hand. And Taylor, you need to understand where Brooke is coming from. She feels threatened. And whether that's fair or not, it's how she feels. Taylor folded her arms. So what are you saying, Ridge? That I should stop being there for my daughter because it makes Brooke uncomfortable. No, Ridge said firmly. I'm saying we need to find a way to work together. For Steffi's sake. Brooke let out a frustrated sigh. Fine, I'll back off for now. But Taylor, if I see even a hint of you crossing the line, I won't stay quiet. Taylor's eyes met Brooke's, her gaze unflinching. You don't scare me, Brooke. 
My priority is Steffi, and that's not going to change. As Rich watched the two women, he couldn't shake the feeling that the battle between them was far from over. Later that evening, at the Forrester Mansion, Eric and Donna sat by the fireplace, enjoying a quiet moment together. But the calm was disrupted when Ridge walked in, looking more exhausted than ever. Rough day, Eric asked, raising an eyebrow. You could say that, Ridge replied, sinking into a chair. Donna handed him a glass of wine. Let me guess, Brooke and Taylor? Ridge nodded. They're at it again. And this time, it's all because of Steffi. Eric sighed. Some things never change. But Ridge, you need to make it clear to both of them that this can't go on. Steffi doesn't need their drama on top of everything else. I know, Ridge said, running a hand over his face. But knowing Brooke and Taylor, this is just the beginning. As the night settled over Los Angeles, the battle lines were drawn. Brooke and Taylor's rivalry, reignited by Steffi's turmoil, threatened to append the fragile peace within the Forrester family. And while Rich hoped for a resolution, deep down, he knew that the storm was far from over.